The breakdown team is live in Christchurch. And it's not just their rugby team that's impressive. The whole place is flourishing. Come on in and join the team live in Christchurch with special guests for the next hour. Kia ora koutou, koutou, hello and welcome. Yes, this is the Riverside Market in Christchurch. Great to be with you here on The Breakdown. Plenty to look forward to tonight, plenty of talent coming out of the Crusaders. And my panel, as always, Jake Hayes made it back into Christchurch. Always loves coming down here. There'll be people who remember the 85 Shield Challenge, JK. Well, they'll come and heckle you, I am sure. <laughs> Justin Marshall and Kendra Coxedge joins the panel for the first time in 2021. And Kendra, we're going to start with you. It's International Women's Day and we're going to start with a women's game. And... It was expected in a couple of days that the Rugby World Cup we were going to have here in New Zealand is not going to happen. And how did you react when you first heard the news? Uh, yeah, pretty gutted. Uh, it's pretty heart-wrenching to, to get that kind of news. But, um, you know, COVID, it's hard with the world that we're living in at the moment. It's so uncertain. And, um, you know, I know New Zealand rugby are working really hard to, to get some international tests this year. So hopefully we can get something. A lot of challenges around the world, JK. Everyone's having to adapt. The fact it has to have to be postponed. But in, in some ways, this may give the teams the opportunity to prepare the way they need to to compete at a World Cup. Yeah, look, I, I think the health and safety of the athletes is, needs to be paramount. You know, COVID's thrown the whole world into turmoil. And I think, like Kendra said, hopefully um, a couple of the sides that maybe can afford it, Marshy, like England and France, might come down and we'll have a Tri-Nation series or something to make sure that we keep that momentum going. Oh, absolutely. It's difficult times, isn't it? And it's never easy when you've got the, the pinnacle of rugby, Kendra, that you have to miss out on. But you said you reached out to the White Ferns. Obviously, the Olympics is... A bit of a debate as well. It's not just rugby that's suffering, is it? No, it's not. And, you know, I reached out to them when they had their news about postponement and, you know, they've reached back out and, you know, it was a challenging time and I was gutted for them when it happened and now yeah. it's kind of happened to us. So, um, yeah, disappointing, but um, onwards and upwards as long as we can get the best prep leading into next year now. So, Kendra, I've, I've, no, I might have... I don't want to get this wrong. Here we go. I might have read that you were going to retire after the World Cup. So, do you just put that off now, do you? Oh, it's, there's a, a World Cup on home turf, so it's pretty hard to, to say no to that. So I was going to sit back and work out how this year is going to look for me and, and then go from there. Nice. That sounds like one more year. One more year. One more year. <laughs> one more year. We've all been through that, guys, isn't it? The fact you get a point in your career. JK, what did you do? You jumped the fence and played that other game. Went to the Warriors. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was old and grumpy, and there was this young blonde guy who <laughs> was running changed? faster than me. I was going to say, has that changed? Came along. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> but I think, you know, at the end of your career, it's important as you get a bit older to find new challenges, Marsha. You know, I probably should have moved to centre, actually, to give myself a bit of a challenge, but I didn't. Went to rugby league. What did you do? Yeah, well, I would have looked forward to wingers getting the ball if you moved to centre, mate. It would have been interesting. But, um, yeah, I decided to, to, to go overseas and reinvigorate uh, my enthusiasm for the game. Absolutely loved it. Good cultural experience. And, um, yeah, it gives you a bit of a life, doesn't it, to have a change sometimes? I went and bowled half volleys. That didn't work out that well. You, a you used to bowl real bad ones to Ricky Ponting. Oh, I remember. Did you yeah. put it on the roof oh, at Eden Park? On the roof at Eden Park. <laughs> I gave you an opportunity to get me and you got me. Let's quickly go back to Byrne. I know she's finished her loaded fries from Bacon Brothers. They're well and truly done. But Oh, you're I going shared. tipping. You're going tipping. We did share, to be fair. I did yeah. share. Yeah. You know, it's all about sharing with the team, teamwork. <laughs> um, look, I'm not too sure that I want to delve too deeply into the Sky uh, tipping competition. If you haven't registered already, it's super easy. Get some rivalry in the office going. It's fantastic. Um, let's have a little peek at the breakdown leaderboard. Um, I know someone who's going to be very happy, thanks to an incredible Crusaders performance. Yeah, Marshy, he's at the top. And didn't he let everybody know? about it this afternoon uh, and yeah I'm number four I went from number one last week can I say in our breakdown team and so JK you got some work to do sorry Sir John Kewen you know I know your blues had a buy but come on now let's have a look at our wider Sky Fano and how they've been going James Parsons uh, JP doing the business nine points in a league of his own there and what I want to know is why our stats guy Tabs Matson, Tum by Matson doesn't even make the cut. He's so far down the board. So if you haven't done it, get involved. It's great competition. Yeah, you're right, Byrne. Uh, unfortunately for Tabs, he's a former coach of the Chiefs and they didn't have a great start. And that's why we're you're sitting right now. Look, with this weekend, let's be real about it. JK, you and I, we're going to go either up or down because I'm going to take the Highlanders and you're going to take the Blues. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll talk about now, though, the Highlanders and Chiefs. And Kendra, the game in Hamilton, remarkable. Obviously disappointed they couldn't have a crowd there. But 
for a team like the Chiefs who were playing so well early on in that contest, it ended up being a surprise, the result. Yeah, it did. I actually even backed them in my in my sky tipping. So uh, I was pretty gutted, you know, nine nine losses on the trot. So I thought I'd, you know, try and back them so they didn't get there. Um, but man, I think at half time, what the Chiefs were up 20, 20 11 and then you know Jonah Nariki just lit, lit it up. Eh? He's powerful. He's got a good step, and he's you know felt a bit sorry for Brad Webber there. He got a bit bumped off at one stage. It happens to all halfbacks, eh, <laughs> it, does, it, it does. happens to everybody. <laughs> <happens> before, <laughs> but Jonah Nariki was a standout. But you talk about moments in game, and this moment here, Marshy, it just turned it, which. Could have been 27-6, ended up being 20-11, and this guy just had one hell of a night. Well, he did, and you feel like you've got momentum in the game, which the Chiefs did at that time. They make a slight error, and then a player who's really on hot form at the moment, which Nareki is, he can hurt you. He scores three tries, but the breakout try that really just changed and swung the momentum towards the Highlanders gave them a little belief. And I just wonder whether or not, JK, then off the back of that, all the talk and speculation about the last time the Chiefs won, all that baggage, that mental baggage, when a player starts doing that to you, what's your confidence levels like? Because they just fell out of the game. Well, Marshy, what worried me the most was it was like a replica of the last nine games I've lost, where they showed signs of brilliance. Like mm. the first, like Kendra said, the first, you know, 35 minutes were outstanding. They were all over the Highlanders, and then they just went to sleep. So that's there's something not right within the camp, and I hate to say that this early. The players either have to look at themselves, or there's something not right, because you can't have those extremes for now nine games in a row. Single moments, though, Kendra, when you think about uh, Anton Leonard-Brown misses a tackle, a Sam Kane misses a tackle, they're things that you don't see often. They're things that are very fixable. Yeah, and they are, and I think, you know, with that game, momentum's so huge in rugby, and, you know, that try created that momentum, and they just took off. They took off from there, but yeah, definitely those small things are, you know, those are those are people that don't miss tackles usually as well. Uh, let's talk about the Highlanders then, Marshy. The fact they yeah. got defeated by the Crusaders at home, they go on the road to Hamilton. How important was that result for them? And did they show things? Given the fact two yellow cards got themselves under a lot of pressure, what did the second 40 mean to them? Yeah, toughness is what it meant, and, and, and absolutely they they got tipped over at home, so. Did, that puts you under pressure. You go away from home and can and galvanise a win there under difficult environment. Obviously, the Chiefs would, would have been equally as determined to get a win. And, and then you then all of a sudden in a game where you're in an arm wrestle and, and you're getting yellow cards against you, you find this guy that just sparks and energises you. If you look at the Highlanders recently, you know they've really struggled for X-Factor players since the likes of Ben Smith and players like that left. And Nareki sparked them. The players believed, stood up and um, fronted up. And, and I think... You know, when you think about what a coach is going to say at half time, they played averagely, right, for 38 minutes or whatever, whenever Nareku scores that try. And you go in at half time, and Brownie would have said, Two yellow cards, you know, we haven't been going great, but we're still in this, we can win it. Yeah. And the guys would have believed it because that was the truth. You know, if he doesn't score that try, then it's a bit hard to say, you know, two yellow cards. But, yeah, they came out. And yeah. the, the Chiefs just didn't come out of half-time, and the Highlanders were outstanding. Handy, though, Kendra, to be able to bring someone like Aaron Smith off the bench. And we saw our first successful referee referral, the fact they went back for some foul play. And you think about in the context of their season, players are going to have to make an impact. And being able to have that flexibility for Lau Whakatawa starts at half-back. When you get that from other players around the squad, really important for your performance. Yeah, and I'm really rating Fakatava the way he's playing, and to, to you know, I think it was always planned by to put um, you know Nuggy to the to the bench, and it worked really well for them. And then having Nuggy come off off the bench in a really important time of the game, I reckon just turned turned it as well. It shows how important the referee's referral could be, Marshy, if it's used properly and in a tighter game. Yeah, absolutely. And the players, are, uh, you know, they are learning how to make sure that they get in and on time and and make the make the right call. And, you know, Aaron Smith, experienced player, JK, he was in. He, he knew that he had spotted something that he didn't feel was right, and he got it right. Well, I was on the sideline, and I actually thought it was Sam Kane that did it, because someone got taken out on the on behalf of the Chiefs, and I thought Sam Kane had done it, but actually it was Aaron that did it. So, you know, I thought it was... I, I actually didn't think it was deliberate, but, hey, it yeah. worked. Oh, well, the contact was the contact, you yeah. know, and in the end, that's what they're going to look at. They're going to go on the technicality of it, and unfortunately, it went to get the Chiefs at that time. Well... It's been a long time between drinks for the Chiefs, but we shouldn't forget that the last time they had a win, it was against the Crusaders, and they play them this weekend. We're all set as we reignite the rivalry. Havili with the kick out to the wing, waiting for it as Sabu Reis! He's in! And Havili floats one over the top to Reis, and he's in again! Through to now McKenzie! Alain Malo! She straight back, beautifully worked! Oh, oh, lovely ball away. Oh. 
I know it! What a ball! And the Chiefs go back to back against the Crusaders. You know, that was 2020. That wasn't a long time ago, team. The Crusaders against the Chiefs. Chiefs, I still believe. Chiefs mana. All right, we're in Riverside Markets, downtown Christchurch, and we've got Louis and Jaden with us. Evening, lads. Rugby fans? Absolutely. Yeah, OK. They say feed the backs, but they've also been feeding the host. Thanks very much, boys. Uh, a little bit of wedges, load of wedges, chicken. Have you got a uh, question for our panel tonight? Absolutely. Um, Justin, if you could have anything in your burger, what would it be? Oh, Only the tough ones. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is going to throw people into shock. I know it is. It's going to be controversial. You know, it could be bacon, it could be chicken, it could oh, be no, anything I, like I, that. Gonna... And I'm going to say... Beetroot! I knew you were going beetroot. beetroot. Good Southlander. So good, good for Southlander. the liver. Beetroot, so absolutely. So good for the liver. <laughs> why, did, <laughs> why did I think he was going to say Swede? Um, Jaden, have you got a question for the panel? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go for Jeff. Mine's a bit harder. Uh, if you could pick anything, would it be Empire Chicken or KFC? Oh, Ooh. massive, massive. I think I need to sample more Empire Chicken. That's what I need to sample, but I tell you what, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, I had KFC for dinner last night. And it was good. It was really, really good. That's too tight to call. I need more Empire Chicken. But I tell you what, KFC is not bad at all. Let's change tack. Let's get back to some rugby. Let's forget about the beetroot for a moment. Let's talk about what happened here, Kendra. Uh, the Crusaders under the pump for the first 20 minutes. The Hurricanes come out of the gate. Bounce to the ball. Uh, Jackson Garden Bash it manages to get over in the corner, but the Crusaders just do what they do well. Yeah, and I think probably with the Hurricanes, they've got a new 9 10 combo going on there, you know, not having TJ. Um, you need someone that's a game driver that leads them around the park, and I think the Hurricanes might be lacking that a little bit at the moment. Marshy, for you, you were commentating the game. Yep. There was momentum shifts, and it happened when Artie Zabia went to the bin. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, when you look at the balance of that game, that first quarter, the, the Hurricanes in general probably had the better part of that game, um, but then all of a sudden they got the yellow card. But also, I think the, the Crusaders are just so good at recognising opportunities, and when they feel that they need to go a gear under circumstances where the opposition are under pressure, they go up that gear and they really, once they get that smell of blood, they go really hard at it, and all of a sudden can take the game away from Artie Savier after the game said, what the hell, you know? We ended up chasing the game somehow after we started so well, and then found ourselves behind by 20 points, and it happened like that. Artie was outstanding during the game, but it did hurt them, JK. And I want to ask you this question. When, when is it not worth the risk, given the fact the referees have been pretty strict in the first couple of weekends, the fact that the risk of putting yourself in a position where they can go to your pocket and you know it can hurt you? Three things for me. If you want to beat the Crusaders, you've got to have everyone on the park for 80 minutes and you've got to play for 80 minutes. Not 79, 80. Second thing, congratulations to the referee because I think they're being so strict that it's slowing the defensive lines up a wee bit and people are onside, which gives it a bit more space. And that's not great if you're playing the Crusaders because they're getting a bit more space. But look, I think that God, if the refs continue with this, players are going to start saying, I'm not going to take that risk, Marshy, because yeah. actually seven points is better than, what was it when Artie was well, off? It was 20, six, 20, yeah, but the 20, thing 20 it, it was yeah. six nil, and if they conceded that line-out drive, uh, try, which I mean, Crusaders are very, very good at. It's 7 6, 15 on 15, like JK saying. Kendra, it, it may be not worth it now. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd probably agree with that, but um, I just want to credit the Crusaders to their defensive game at the moment, even their malls, um, like, they're just so hungry, you know, they're off the line and you see Cody, Ty Cody Taylor flying out and you can just see it, we talk about attack, you know, you're taking a defence's attack without the ball now. You talk about this moment here, um, Sebu Reese coming back and yep, the, the defensive line and for me, Marcia, I'm looking at it and they're playing almost a 13-man front, they're daring you and they're putting their half back in the line, they're saying we're not going to let you get over the advantage line and their desperation to defend their trial on it as strong as ever. I, I think that's probably the, the key word, how desperate they are. When Garden Bashup got that intercept, he looked gone, but the two players chasing Severus and Fying and Nuku were not going to give up, and that, that epitomises you know, what they're doing. And then you get the, the tough stuff up front that we don't really like it a lot that much, Kendra, do we? But the, the, the defending of driving malls, you know, the, the fact that they <laughs> are just impossible to get through, that you have to give it absolutely everything, and at the moment they're giving you nothing. Well, the, the only space that I've been seeing is probably the one that Artie took anyway, straight through the middle when he made that yep. brilliant break yep. in the second half, because they are so quick to their feet and they're spreading so much that, you know, if you're playing them, what do you do? Do you go back to sort of going through the, you know, through the middle a wee bit, putting a bit more pressure on them, playing a bit more boring to, to bring that defensive pattern 
you know, a bit of disruption because they are so quick to their feet and so well organised. I think the physicality for me, though, you talk about their defensive effort, they're not having to commit numbers to the breakdown. They're not having to commit numbers in and around the tackle because they're getting such physicality. I want to talk about a couple of players, though. How well has Cody Taylor started this season? First two games in, Kendra. You need superstars in this game, and he's setting the standard right now. Yeah, I actually used to train with Cody back in the day. Um, you know, a lot of trainings, a lot of sessions. Are you but using I think he's back in the day already? Yeah, you're using back, back in the day. You haven't finished playing. You haven't finished playing yet. Something special though, right? Yeah, no, he's, he's unreal. He's, he's got skillful, he's intelligent, and he's got good, he's, he's very powerful. What we're looking at though is the, the dynamic things he's doing in the game. You know, look, he's pounced on that ball. It was difficult conditions. You can see the rain coming down. But there was other areas in the game. If you actually sat down and watched it again oh. in its entirety and watched every time he got the ball, how explosive he was on, onto it. And his footwork when he was going into contact, he was always getting over the advantage line. And that's what sort of form at the moment he's in. He's really powerful, really energetic and dynamic. And he's giving them great momentum in everything that he does. Yeah, look, I think uh, the, the beauty of All Black Rugby and New Zealand Rugby, it continues to evolve. And I think Dan Coles needs to take some of the credit for that because he was the first sort of hooker to be out wide and running like a, like a loose forward or a back. But the thing about Cody is he gets better every year. You see an added skill to his game, his passing game. I mean, incredibly explosive, running through gaps. So, you know, I think he is good in the tight stuff. He's got the size, but he's also got that skill, that, that complete skill now, which is amazing. Kendra, I ask you about the Hurricanes now. Look, they started 0-2 last season, and then they went on tear, but won five in a row before their last game. You look at this team, are they concerned right now, given where they, their game is at? I mean, I think with Super Rugby Aotearoa, it's so tight, you know, so you probably are going to be a little bit concerned. You don't really have, you don't have a lot of time to get things right. And as mentioned before, I think that 9-10 that co combo, and there needs to be some work on that over the next wee while. It just seems to me, Marcia, they've got, they've got players who can impact the game. They're just not finding a way for the likes of Nani Lamapi yep. to, get, to get strong carries, to get the ball going forward. Some of their skills for me, Ian Foster talked about it last week, they're just making a number of errors which are uncharacteristic yeah. for them. No, very well put. You know, I think Umega Jensen, you know, you couldn't get him into the game, couldn't get um, Low Muppy into the game. You know, they've got some very good outside backs as well. Geordie's not really getting the ball, you know, in, in the outside channel. So, yeah, they need to maybe tactically look at their game and uh, make some changes there and they'll get better for it. And they've got a bye week. They'll look back at the first couple of weekends and they'll look to respond. Well, Bernie has been testing us every week on the breakdown with some trivia. We are ready to go. No one's feeding me the answers this week, <laughs> Bernie. Really? So we're on our own. Well, I'm on my own that, anyway. What have you got for us? Look, I'm going to keep you honest. We like to test the grey matter each week. And this one is, because we're in Cru Crusader country, we'll keep it red and black themed, all right? And can we take a moment? How pretty is Christchurch looking at the moment? Gorgeous. All right, ponder this. Have a little think about it. Uh, don't reach for your phone, Jeff. I'm going to confiscate it, all right? So who is the second top try scorer of all time? for the Crusaders. I'm going to give you two clues. One, the top try scorer was too easy, OK? So we've gone for the second top try scorer. The second clue is, it's not Marshy, OK? So who's that? Who is the second top try scorer for the Crusaders of all time? So ponder that. But up next on the breakdown, we have some very special guests. No derailing them. They are staying well and truly on track. Richie Moonga and Joe Moody, fresh from their impressive win. Join us very shortly, and impressive is one way to describe this gorgeous city. I lived here for a wee while, I started my career down here at TVNZ and CTV. Sadly, neither of those buildings remain with us, but I thought I'd catch up with an old colleague who I used to work with, and he could give me a bit of a tour of the town. And here he is, Christchurch's favourite son, son of a gun in fact. Good to see you, Jay. Good to see you, that's a big call, favourite son. It has many good sons. Oh, but you are. I'll stop it now. But right here, yeah. in fact, on, on the day of the earthquake is, I was actually seven floors up right here, and it, um, yeah, it shook that, that old building. You know, I actually thought it had gone past tipping point, to be honest. So I had one of those, is this it moments. So it's still kind of weird to come back here, eh? It is. It is weird. It, it, it's lovely. It, it still feels a part of me, a little bit of home. Mm. But I'm quite disorientated. So much change. Exciting, though. Oh, it is. I mean, we used to get lost here because there was nothing here. And now we get lost because there's so many new things going on. I'll follow you. OK. And this is where you'll come to watch the mighty Crusaders play undercover. 
Yes. Um, I, I can't give you the exact date of completion, so I don't need to book the flights just Good yet. things take time. Now, where would the corporate box be? Where I'll, uh, I'll well, be not that there. I've ever been invited to one, but <laughs> I meant... You'll be climbing the fence to yeah. try and <laughs> breach security to get to Remember the Remember me, Jason Gunn? I used to be somebody. <laughs> Now, you see, when we were younger, before we had the work done... Um, you see, <laughs> you or me? Both of us. <laughs> Hagley Park it was just a park. It was glorious. Mm. But now we've got Hagley Oval. Under lights now. It is beautiful. It's very intimate, isn't it? I feel like I could be in the countryside. Yes. Really, really amazing. But at the same time, you're just moments from town. You're so right, Jace. A couple of minutes and we are literally downtown. This is magic. Very flash, very bit posh. Very glorious, I think. Glorious. Um, many options. I feel like maybe the city planners sort of went to Melbourne and Sydney and sort of went, we've got to have one of those. Oh, we'll have five of those. We'll take three of those. They've done all right. They've done it good. Every day I find something new, more to love about Christchurch. Yes, thirsty work that walk though. I think we might have something uh, No, 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 no. Listen, I've got somewhere special I need to take you. Come on. Margaret Mahi Playground. Now that is look. amazing. How ironic. Jason Gunn brings me to a children's playground. That well, is classic. When you think about it, though, you see, if it wasn't for kids and kids TV, you and I, we never would have got a job it's in where television. We um, you know, but the thing is, on a day like today, when you see families out and you hear the kids laughing and giggling, Christchurch feels in a pretty good place to me. Race you to the slide. Okay, go on. Welcome back to Christchurch Riverside Markets where the breakdown team is settling in for an hour. We've got some special guests coming up, but what we like to do is keep the panel honest. And we had a bit of a uh, trivia question for our team. The question was, and of course we're in red and black country, who is the second most prolific try scorer of all time for the Crusaders? I gave a couple of clues. One wasn't marshy. So, Justin, let's come to you for oh. your crack at it. Ooh, straight away. OK, thank you very much. No pressure. Uh, so, m my, my educated guess is going to be uh, Marika Vunibaka. Really? Would you yep. like to phone a friend? Is that your final answer? No, that's my final answer. OK, we need to go to the next contestant, because you're wrong. Oh, oh that's no. awesome. <laughs> but, go on, Jeff. Uh, do you want me to go? Well, I actually, I think it's Caleb Ralph, but it's not Caleb Ralph. And I, I think... Kendra, where are you going? I, I know I'm wrong. I'm wrong, right? <laughs> Is that all you got, Caleb Ralph? Well, he, I, he might be... scored far too many tries. Actually, it could be a problem. Uh, I, next. Really? Kendra. OK. <gasps> Wow. I probably shouldn't have said my answer in the break because Jeff just stole mine. Oh, I did not he's steal good your like answer. That. He does that. He does that. Are you kidding he does me? That. I, also, I also thought it was Caleb. It might have been Caleb Rell. Yeah, I, okay. I know okay, the so answer. But it's not Marika Vunbaka, which I know is the answer. fantastic. Hey, who, who, who? Is it Remy? Look at that. I did Leon say McDonald, you, the current in the break. Coach I was about to say that. You didn't throw to me. Yeah, what? Yeah. Rookie Did error that you were going to say it, but you didn't. So there you go, Leon no, McDonald, the current well, we'll coach. We'll put him back as here, though. <laughs> well, yeah, you snooze, you lose, JK. All right, so look at that. Leon McDonald, 122 games, 42 tries. You see, Caleb Ralph, it was just a little too obvious. So we thought, let's go the next cab off the rank. Leon McDonald, wow. boy, he had some wheels in his day, didn't he? I was actually going to say Storm and Norman. Storm and Norman? <laughs> yeah, just because he scored some great ones. It was obvious for you, JK. It's the current Blues coach. Surely, I knew the answer. You just didn't throw it at me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Could have got that. Oh, I know. I tell you what. I tell you what. So, very, very good. Some fantastic players in there, Marshy. I'm surprised on you. Yeah, well, he was there, though. He was fourth on the list. I, I didn't realise that um, D D DC and uh, Leon were that greedy, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm surprised you're not higher on that. Where are you on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, for, a guy, you, man. for a guy who was well, looking and sniffing at an opportunity. Yeah, right. yeah, should have had a few more tries, actually. Should I'm going to move you onto the wing now, because we've got a couple of special guests who are coming in there. You guys okay. shift over. Let's All bring right. in Richie Moanga and Joe Moody. Where are they? Well, they're wandering. Here they are. They're wandering the strip. There they are in Christchurch. Here it is, Riverside Market. <laughs> Champion Crusaders, here they go. Welcome, lads. Thanks it's for having good. us. Thank you. Joe, welcome, welcome. Evening. Yeah, um, uh, recovery day today after yesterday. Do they still do that? And what did you do? Uh, yes, we still do recovery days. We're supposed to do some active recovery, get the legs spinning, uh, do a little bit of so, a light, light. So you just well. supposed to? Did you not? <laughs> I was, I was busy um, <laughs> doing, doing a wee uh, pool session and um, just a light flush on the bike, yeah. So you're not doing squats? No, I thought no, that not, was not Alan Frank's, the, just the rule, is the, when you're one of the front rowers here, that's where you're straight to the gym? Oh, not, not the uh, day straight after a game, no. Richie, for you? 
Yeah, I spent myself uh, active recovery, um, wondering after looking after my, my daughter Billy. She keeps me on my toes, so nice. yeah, it's good recovery. Well, you active recovery no, today, recovery. Yeah, your recovery. <laughs> yeah, no, my recovery was uh, a little stroll around Hagley Park, actually. Oh, that's nice. what I did. Absolutely. Just turning back the so, clock. So were you actually running? You, you could call it running. <laughs> that's right, I said you're yeah, strolling. You you're strolling. Yes. Oh, look, how, how great, guys. Uh, I'll start with you, Joe. Um, great to be back at home in front of the crowd uh, Sunday afternoon. I mean, this sort of contest, take nothing for granted. This competition doesn't get any easier. Dead right. And, uh, yeah, like you said, afternoon footy and at home doesn't get any better. So... Uh, those local derby matches, they're always pretty tough as well. But, uh, yeah, it's a great way to sort of kick the season off, I suppose. Yeah, Richie, just seems to be, you seem to be really, really comfortable driving the football team around. I know that, um, you know, in the past people talk about how hard it is for a younger first five coming through, but you seem to be getting more and more comfortable. Are you feeling really good about that now? Yeah, it's something I've worked on the last couple of years, but... Um... Big boys like Joe make it easier for me to do so and um, having a world-class forward pack, you know, the, the likes of Cody and, and Sam, the way they've been playing, definitely makes it a lot easier for me. I like that when you're supporting the old dogs straight away, you give yeah. them a mention. Joe, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, you were the centre of attention for a week of Super Rugby Aotearoa after, after Dunedin. And this is, uh, in all honesty, the fact that it's a gladiatorial game that we play, right? It, it's tough. And, of course, when you go out there and... and Ben O'Keefe was on the show last week and he's talking about the incident in Dunedin where you possibly could have got a yellow card. I mean, how hard is that when you've got to balance the fact you're playing a game which is physical and it gets a bit niggly? Yeah, they do a lot of work with us in our mental skills over, you know, when you get that red haze come over you and the steam coming out the ears and how you're supposed to deal with that and everything. But, uh, yeah, obviously I just had that moment where I couldn't quite get myself back into what they call the blue. I was in the red and, uh, yeah... Uh, I was probably fortunate, uh, like you said, not, not to get anything for it, so, yeah. Well, I, I actually, obviously, myself personally, don't know anything about the Red Mist. <laughs> such a disciplined player back in my day, Joe, but uh, what I was really impressed with was your discipline because you managed to get into that slight scuffle without closing your fist and uh, did it with an open hand. That was incredibly uh, resilient of you to not actually really fall into the deep, dark uh, depth Red. of the mist. Yeah, no, I'm proud is of myself. That, is that a technique that you've used on a few backs that piss you off at training? Or? Uh, yeah, normally they get it across the back of the head. Rich has probably had a couple of those. but um, Hence the mullet. I've sort of protected the back of my head because Moody goes around and gives everyone that one. So, no, it's good. Outstanding, outstanding. Let's go to Bernie and get some questions from the crowd. I'm looking forward to this because your fans, they're, they're never too... Oh, they're always kind to you guys. What do you got, Bern? Look, this is Hunter. He's 10 years old from Christchurch. And what club do you play for, Hunter? I play for New Brighton. And you're such a, a rugby fan. You've seen a few games in the last few weeks. Where have you travelled? I've, I've gone to Dunedin and the one that was played yesterday. And it was specifically to watch to Canterbury? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. True red and black fan there. And you've got a question for one of the team. What's your question? Who's it for? Um, my question is for Joe Meady. And what um, what did the player that you punch, what did he do to you to make him punch you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Only the tough questions, Joe. Uh, <laughs> great question, mate. Um, <laughs> firstly, I'd just like to establish I didn't punch him. Um, I had my hand open and uh, what he did was um, he pulled me out of the mall and was holding me out. So I was just, I was just trying to push him away. And yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Do you accept that? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to refer up, TMO, that one? Yeah, did you say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Good on you, he's, a, he's an islander. <laughs> hey, 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 buddy. Oh, Very red and black, through there. and through down Very here, red and black. Careful. All right, so we've also got a viewer question. We love to get your feedback. Email us at thebreakdown.co.nz and we'll get questions going. So this week, uh, Arjun has got a question for Richie Mawanga. He's saying, Richie, do you prefer the two-pivot game, like the All Blacks tried in the Rugby World Cup, or the one-pivot role you play in the Crusaders with the options of other players stepping in when they see the opportunity? Oh, what do you reckon, Richie? That's a tough question. I think um, as long as I'm on the field, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so run us through, though, how it feels different. Is it, is it, is it significantly different? I, I don't think so. I think um, to be a world-class fullback these days, you've got to be skilled and, and you're in the uh, position of first receiver a lot. Uh, you look at all across the Super Rugby teams in New Zealand and, and they're at first receiver. Um, 
it just seems to be when there's a fullback that's also a first five, the, these sort of questions come up, but it doesn't make a difference, really. Moose, do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, if I were to chime in on this a little, um, <laughs> what people probably don't realise was at that World Cup, it wasn't just the two pivots, we actually played with three. Yeah, but Because right. um, I'd told Rich that I'd step in for him at any point <laughs> if he was getting a bit puffed or tired or anything. And... I just never had to actually come into that first receiver role. But So if it had gone to you earlier in the tournament, maybe, do you think of a different outcome? Uh, we can only speculate. <laughs> 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 Absolutely love it. Absolutely and then your kicking it. game moods, obviously, is something you've been working on recently. Is that why you'd like to be the third pivot? I generally tried not to kick too much. I like just the hit-em-ups and uh, that sort of carry-on. But if I have to, I would back myself, yeah. Uh, Richard, I want to ask you the fact that the game continues to change, and particularly over the last 18 months, what everyone across the globe is dealing with, with Kendra's having to deal with the fact that you're postponing a Rugby World Cup. What have you guys, do you think, learnt from that, from week to week, the fact we had the change kick-off this last weekend from a Saturday to a Sunday? I think more than anything, it's taught us that we've got to adapt really well um, and expect anything. Um, you know, like you said, the, the change in the time of the game and the date um, caught us off guard a little bit, but we just had to adapt to that. And um, we've seen the last over the last year, we've had to adapt to many things. So I think the team that can adapt the most, and we've had to adapt to rule changes and and tempo of the game and all sorts. So I think that's one of the main things. Do you make you think yourself you're better for it, Joe? The fact that you've had to go through that, those changes. I'm not sure, too sure what to tell you on that one at the moment. Sorry, I'm still sort of feeling them out a little bit. And in all honesty, I haven't actually felt too much of a significant change uh, in what I'm doing out there. So, The scrums are uh, scrums, the line outs are line out. Yeah, exactly. I think every other team in this competition wants to know how long you guys spend on your line out drive defence five metres from your line. <laughs> because it's insanely good. And the speculation whether or not the try that was scored on the weekend from Ricky Riccitelli technically could be uh, you've conceded a try are you guys counting that one as one against the head uh i think if you go to the technicalities of it which we don't want to you know get to the nitty gritties but um it probably doesn't count as a mall try because he peeled off and went by himself so i don't know you're saying no another so you're words. blaming the backs the blame like that he's blaming me yeah, yeah i was the one there <laughs> Come on, Richie. I was so hey. concerned about trying to stop them all and left the, left the gap there, but yeah, yeah Moody's but really had a word to me, yeah. yeah. But do, you, do you love that challenge, that part of the game, when you know it's coming? Yeah, that's, uh, it's honestly, it's an awesome part of the game. As soon as it comes down into that five metre ch uh, channel or whatever, we, uh, the whole pack just bars up. We know that it's game on. We know everyone wants a bar of it. And uh, yeah, it's just time to go, go to work. Hey. Uh, fantastic answers. Great to have you with us here at Riverside, Mark. Thanks for coming down. Enjoy yourselves. If you had to pick a restaurant, you guys, quickly, which one would it be? Uh, if you like fried chicken, I think it's pretty tough to go past Empire Chicken. For you? I think, yeah, if you're looking for something classy, Amazon Eater or Crockett, definitely up there. Nice, Nike. Thank you so very, very much. So much of what you talked about tonight comes down to coaching. What we do know in New Zealand is the women's game continues to grow. And in Wellington, it's a great initiative from then. A coaching clinic, specifically coaching the women's game. Is it different coaching men or women? Well, actually, it's just about creating positive environments no matter who we have, because uh, we want to keep them in the game. So I think there's a lot of stuff that we can transfer across um, to our men's sides as well. So whether they end up coaching a women's side or not, they're going to be able to take that learning forward, so that's cool. Coming to a coaching course today is it's great to connect with the people who are actually doing all the mahi. Being able to have a conversation with them around what they find challenging, what they love about it, um, because it's all voluntary and they, they're really setting the scene for what the future holds for the, for the game so they've got a massive influence so spending that time with them is really great to be able to connect and understand and hear from them really is, is important to me. Show me your hands because that's what we want to see, show me the shape of the hands because that's what we want to see too and let's move those hands around so as your partner you want to be throwing them not always beautiful partners, passes because you're not always going to get those on the field. The stronger we build our networks around the country the more we can learn from each other, take the stuff that's working well, copy and paste it, man. Give it to everybody to be able to lift it up. That's why today is important. It's about looking at that next step. Where is it that we can go so we can keep involved in the game? Don't have to be on the field to be involved in rugby. So let's make sure that there's those opportunities for us. Courses like this are critical for making the women's game better. We don't have enough female coaches coaching in the women's game. You know, hopefully they get some, some confidence out of this. 
it's massive that, that they are better because they develop our players. So you know, it's critical for us that they coach well and so hopefully they, they leave here with some ideas on how to make trainings fun and you know, get quite detailed about things so people are learning but, but also enjoying themselves. The better we can get our coaches to be, the more, the more players are going to be feeling safe, have an enjoyable time, love the game, grow the game and, and hopefully they'll just filter up to having more quality players for the Black Ferns eventually. Such a critical part of the game coaching and Kendra, how, how do you like that initiative and what do you think the difference is? Oh, well, you know, I think that's a great, great initiative. Um, I think, you know, it was mentioned in there about creating a positive environment for coaches and it's important for coaches to be able to turn up and be comfortable at a coaching course as well as players turning up to an environment that's, that's positive. So, you know, I, I play a huge part in, in that in my job and it's, it's really cool to see and the more we can do it, the more female coaches we'll get. I'll ask you this because I was very fortunate to do some work with the Black Ferns briefly uh, when I was in my uh, extensive coaching career, which JK ended. Um, but, Kendra, you talk about... Uh, that's in jest. Uh, I did it to myself no, but yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're laughing at that he always gets me with that one but what I found is the fact that you're so eager to soak up information sometimes you get a bit of pushback but but from the from the guys but it just seems as a group the willingness to learn particularly you've got so many new players coming to the sport yeah, and I think you're, you're dead right. Like uh, for us as well, as we're like sponges. So you, you know, you kind of you coach us how you want to be coached, and you'll get exactly what you're asking from us. But at the same time, rugby's rugby. Uh, so I think in terms of the game, it's the same. But it's just there are a few changes in the way you might deliver. It's, what interests me the most is, I reckon the women's game's got the best secret. You're turning athletes from other sports into great, like, competent rugby players very quickly. I mean, how are you doing that? People are coming from hockey and from netball and there they are, you know, getting to the top sport to the Black Ferns really quickly. I mean, is there a special thing that you do? I think just here in New Zealand, you know, rugby is a great sport and, you know, the success of our Black Ferns and Black Ferns Sevens has probably helped grow that and it's just rapidly growing and it's a really cool time to be a part of the game. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, we're going to see the biggest stage here uh, in New Zealand next year. Fantastic to see the growth of the game and it continues. Continues down here, the great rugby being played by the Crusaders, the defending champions of Super Rugby Aotearoa. And Razor is next on the show. And he knows how to make an entrance. Just punting down, making his way, looking so comfortable. Can't wait to talk to Razor Robertson. Kia ora and welcome back yes, to the Riverside Market here in Christchurch. This is The Breakdown. It's been great. We've heard from Richie Moanga. We've had Joe Moody with Kendra Cochins joining the panel here. And plenty for us to talk about. And look, we've enjoyed what's well, been a great night here. I'm well and truly rugged up. I've got the jersey on, the jacket. And Scott Robinson's going to come in. And he's not dressed for the weather. Where is he? Razor, come on in. Come on down. T-shirt and shorts. T-shirt. <laughs> come on, this is a champion coach going for a five-peat. Three Super Rugby titles, then he's won Super Rugby Aotearoa. That was last year. You're going for a back-to-back -back there, Razor. Welcome. Great for you to join us. Enjoy your little boat ride. Yeah, it was. It was nice. It was my debut on oh, the really? punting down the, down the river. So did you, it, give it a, did you give it a go? No. Actually, he wouldn't let me. Oh, really? No, no, no. He health and safety? Keep your hair um, dry. Yeah, health and safety. <laughs> He actually said to me he fell off um, three times in the first week, so oh, really? it was enough for me. Balance yeah. on. Your core would have... Surfer. You're a surfer. You're yeah, not falling so. off there. You yeah. had a surf today? Yep, I actually did. Yeah, stand up paddle this morning out in beloved Sumner. Oh, it was yeah. a great day here in Christchurch. Let's talk about yesterday and talk about the start you've had. Satisfied where you are at with uh, your beginning of the season? Yeah, it's a, it's a great start to get a, a win away and then come home to a Hurricanes team that did a job on us the year before. And um, so there was a little bit extra in the week. You know, it's always you find motivation as much yeah. as you possibly can. And so we reflected on um, a couple of the efforts of the boys from the year before, but. Um, the opportunity to, to put that to bed. Kendra's been waiting for you. You've got a question for Razor? First of all, Razor, I'm yeah. disappointed you haven't taken Jane on the, on the punt. <laughs> Not the romantic, am I? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I guess, uh, you know, you probably get asked this question a lot around the legacy of the Crusaders. What do you think defines the legacy of the Crusaders? Uh, it's a good one for Marshy to probably tag it in <laughs> as well, because we, um, we started together back in um, 96 as, as OGs, and we were last that year. And two years later, uh, probably 70, 80% of the group won it. Uh, and we won three in a row. And that just set the standard. Uh, and just the good people after good people coming in and handing on stories and just keeping the collective culture that, that was built over that period of time. And, um, you know, we get a lot of coaches and players that stay and, and are extremely loyal 
um, and that just adds to the cohesion and the depth of tradition. How do you keep it fresh, Razor? So you can clop at the moment, Liverpool winning everything for the last few years and now they're like eighth. I mean, how do you keep it fresh? This is your fifth season, you're winning, you know, and people think yeah, that's easy, but that's actually hard. People rest on their laurels. So what do you keep doing to keep changing it? Well, the target gets bigger, doesn't it? So you've got to find a way to firstly motivate yourself so you can keep the energy up and motivate the group and, and make, make it sort of bigger than yourself, bigger than the actual, just the competition. And um, then it's all around the, your families, your community and the wider good of it. And um, creating a connection point where you sort of dig deeper into yourself because uh, you, you, um, the, the desperation goes um, after a while if you're chasing or, or you've got to make it for a, a different reason for that, like you uh, um, just love what you do. I want to uh, get deep as well, if you don't mind, Razor, and ask you about the, the harmony. How do you keep the harmony in the team? Like, I, he's a champion, Blake, Luke Romano, so he won't mind me saying this. I saw him yesterday eating a burger, watching the game. <laughs> you know, any franchise in this country would love to have him in their side. Yeah. But, and he's not getting any game time. You've got plenty of players like that yeah. and such depth. But this competition is, you know, you need to get your players out there each week and win games. You know, how do you keep them players that could be playing anywhere else here in Christchurch and happy? Yeah, that's a good point. Obviously, you ran out for the development and he's a 150-odd game crusader and he's a crusader for life and he's come back at um, 36 years of age and sort of knows his role. If he's required, he'll come in and play, but he, he's a mentor for the young guys. Like, he was mentored. Yeah. Um, so he takes a lot of pride on how he's started and finished his career and what he can do and add to that group. So there are skillful conversations when you get guys come back like that and you're picking other, other guys. But they, they know the teams first. Razor, there's a randomness to tonight. We got Bernie out in the crowd looking for questions. So this is coming from Bern and some of the fans who are here. Bernie, who have you got for us? Random. Talk about random. The legacy, the, the success of the team. Isn't it the two Bs, Razor? It's all a bit heavy. Isn't it beer and brotherhood? Isn't that the key to the Crusaders, really? Yes, all right, we've got Rich and Carlin with a couple of questions. I have not met a Cantabrian yet who didn't go to the game on the weekend, truthfully. Rich, who's your question for? Uh, my question's for Razor. Yep. Uh, the nature of the game is, Razor, you have to substitute people off at the 60-minute mark. How do you really trust that those younger guys are going to get the job done in that last 20? Great question. Yeah, it is strong. Uh, I think it's... Uh, it's important you set, um, set them up during the week. Like Fletcher Newell's a prime example of it. Young guy, guy tight head, prom, prop, extremely smart. Um, some of his scrummaging sessions against Joe Moody are going to be tough or not tougher than, than the game. Uh, and then just put a lot of faith in them. Off you go. Um, it's you going to learn. You expect sometimes they, um, things might not go perfect for them, but you understand it's part of their growth. And, give them another chance and get them some continuity and some, uh, yeah, belief in themselves. And then revert back to the beer and the brotherhood. Carlin, what's your question? Um, do you have a pre-game hype song? Oh, because we know he likes per his music, because you can bust some shapes. Well, personally, uh, yeah, I've got a few gems, especially with um, back the Chili Peppers back in the day. I'll try and draw those back. But there's definitely a team song before we run out. Um, We've got a few actually over the years have sort of compounded and we've carried on. It's a bit of a medley. Uh, that can't be touched, can't be moved. The boys play that, so I'll get a bit of rocking going in before we go out. <laughs> Gets me hyped up before we get into the crowd, you know. Do so you know he where the karaoke dance? Are you sing and dance? Do you know where the karaoke places are around here? <laughs> I know Marshy does, but are you? <laughs> no. Oh, no, come I, on. There's a lot of tone deaf people out there. I've got Voice of an angel, obviously, but <laughs> no, 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 I'm That's not a karaoke right. person. No, no, not anymore. Uh, Razor, let's talk about the, what it's going to take to win this competition because you've had a strong start, but you know there's a lot of games to come in front of you. Everyone's going to get better. How much better do you think you guys can get? Uh, yeah, that's an exciting thing. You know, I think we can get a lot better in different areas. We've created lots of opportunities we didn't finish. Uh, our discipline has got better in some areas, so if we can continue to grow that and trust our structures. Uh, and we've got a lot of players coming back. So you need a lot of energy, you need depth in your squad, you need to keep the momentum. And you know when things aren't quite going well that you have a clear goal in mind at the end and that's part of footy, but just keep getting excited. And, and the great thing this year, there's gonna be a final, so it's gonna come off to a one-off, but you've got to get yourself there first. How do you get away from the game, Razor? I know you do a bit of uh, sup paddling yeah. and stuff, but how do you clear your mind so you can actually be a bit creative around where the game should go? 
look, we do uh, where the game should go, and so I'm personal. It's a two-side question. So, I, firstly, I exercise every day in some capacity. Not get up early before work to clear my head, something around water, swimming or surfing, or do a lot of yoga in that as well with with the body. Uh, um, we still watch a lot of Northern Hemisphere footy too, just to make sure we know where that game's going. Um, keep in touch with Ronan Algara over in La Rochelle as much as we can. Uh, we've got a guy, John Gardner, who um, is our venal analyst. He came out of the Cardiff University. He did a degree in uh, performance analyst work. So he's got a lot of contacts in the, in the UK, so he keeps himself right on the pulse. Um, so he's got a lot of information and trends and um, stats that come in behind. So That's not getting away from the game. Is that just being yeah, a coach, right? Yeah, that's the hard thing, does. right? That, it's hard, right? Hard though, right? Yeah, but I was just probably asking the end of the game that you, you can keep an eye on things from afar without watching Sky 24 hours a day. day. So, um, but you've got to get the balance of it because, you know, Super Rugby is a, is a sprint or, 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 you know, a bit of an endurance sprint these days, sort of 1,500 metres now, but um, you've got to make sure you keep hitting the game while, while you're on and then you just look at trends in the off, off OK, let's talk about the game, the contest, the, the physical contest and the fact that you may be forced into playing a third round if we aren't able to get yeah. that trans-Tasman bubble. Does that maybe change, if you find out early enough, the way you approach some of the other games, knowing it's going to go deeper? Uh, yeah, potentially. Uh, it, it, it's a week to week, though, because you, if you, you've sort of been through the cycle of you're playing the whole year season and what it could look like, and then you come back and actually look at your performances, your form of your players, your injuries, where you sit on the log. So it sort of comes back to a week-to-week -week process as well. Um, but we've got a four-week block. You know, we, we're four and a bye, which suits us, gets our rhythm. Uh, so we'll, we'll get this four out of the way and reassess. I'm going to ask you one last question. Sam Whitelock, a couple yeah. of back-to-back 80-minute -back games. Then I see him picking up the, the advertising hoardings afterwards, like the, the, the foam ones, not the big heavy ones, but the foam ones and taking those in. When I see a guy like that who's played yeah. as many games to the Crusaders, what does that suggest to you about the man? Oh, he's a commander. Um, he leads by example, and that's what commanders do. He, he's a commanding presence, he's got a commanding voice in our team. Um, he's a winner, you know, Braden and Caroline are really proud of all the White Leg boys, but what, what Sam does is pretty special. Um, played 300 plus first class games, and he's uh, an incredible athlete, a man. Razor, as always, fantastic. Great to have you with us on the show. Appreciate your time, and we'll see you. It's all on the Saturday, right? The Chiefs are coming to town, and uh, yeah. they'll be looking to, to, to get some points on you. Yeah, thanks for thanks coming down to Riverside. Awesome. <laughs> City's growing. It's um, great to be a part of it. All right, yeah. thanks, mate. Let's go back to Burns. She's got a special giveaway for tonight's people who gave us some questions. I sure do. We love your feedback. We love your questions. And we had a great question from Hunter tonight, who's 10. Have, have you liked what you've heard tonight, Hunter? Yeah. No. Yep. Um, yep. Pretty cool. All right. Well, we liked your question, which was pretty much uh, asking a prop, Joe Moody, about fisticuffs. Not afraid to ask the tough questions. And for that, I think you've got a future in journalism, you've got Sky Sport Now. That is all yours. Do you know what that is? No. That is basically your ticket to all a sport buffet, my friend. That is like the key to the remote and all the sport you want. So you've got a pass for a month. Congrats. Thank you. What do you want to say to the Crusaders for this weekend? Um, good luck and I'll be there. Sweet. Hunter, 10 years old, future crusader. Yeah, there. And I know his favourite player, I think, is Richie Wong as well. Uh, big weekend coming up. Uh, the Chiefs coming to town won't be easy, but the Crusaders on top of their game. Let's talk about the both games and the Blues at home for the first game of the season. For them, they'll have an opportunity to have a crowd. I'm absolutely sure of it. Big games for both teams. The Highlanders travelling away. Yeah, I mean, it's always, it's always exciting. And I guess with the Blues coming off a, off a bye in a fresh week, it'll be interesting to see how they, they pull off. And then the Chiefs, you know, coming off that disappointing loss and coming up against a team that's on, on form. So who are you picking? Uh, Come on, because you're tipping competition. You're involved now. You're part oh. of the breakdown team. <laughs> uh, I'd have to go, obviously, the Crusaders. And yep. then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back the Blues. And that never happens. Oh, wow, that never happens, Marshy. Yeah, it's an interesting weekend, isn't it? Because you've got the Chiefs who are desperate for a win, uh, and the Crusaders with good momentum, but they'll be looking to, to, to ambush them. I don't think they'll be able to achieve that, but I think it might be a tougher ask than what the Crusaders think. They might have to dig a bit deeper than what they have done so far, but they, they, should, come, they should win that game, but they'll have to grind it out. And uh, I'm going to go for a little bit of an upset. Uh, I think that, that the Highlanders, with the Blues having had a bye and been sitting I know. Um, up in Auckland. You've done the this specifically for JK. To, uh, <laughs> either that or I'm throwing a curveball out for the tipping comp because I'm, I'm winning it. OK, JK, for you? 
Oh, I'm just excited about being um, back at home at the Blues. I think it's really important. The crowd turns up. We start celebrating like we did last year. So hopefully we get the, the crowd in. I think the Blues will win. Um, the Chiefs will have to play for 80 minutes, and they haven't done that for nine games. So I just don't think they'll be able to compete for 80. I think they'll be way better than they were last week. But So Crusaders and the Blues. To what win. I can say is I don't think we'll go through this competition without seeing an upset. It will happen somewhere. Whether it happens at Eden Park this week, we'll have to wait and see. Great to have joined us here in Christchurch at Riverside Market. Great. And thanks to the Crusaders for everything they've done in helping us. We will see you in seven days' time. Out of Wellington. And the capture is on here. Tanani Manu. No one will catch it. 2017 Super Rugby Champions, the Crusaders. So Moanga floats it away for Tamani Valu. For Todd, hands it back beautifully. Scott Barrett, Crusaders win a ninth title. Been turned over here. Sam Whitelock in a bit of space. Got it away to Taylor. Cody Taylor. And the Crusaders win a tenth title. Streaking down the touchline. Paul and Field. Bridges with him. Morgan finishes it up. What a glorious try. The Crusaders and Super Rugby Aotearoa to the 10 Super Rugby titles that they've won.